welcome to the workshop on electric powertrain controls. We will actually try to give you an introduction of what electric powertrain controls actually means and uh, why it ta it's taking a lot of importance. And the other thing that we would actually go over during this webinar is to see how can we actually get ourselves skilled for that. Okay? And there is an upcoming course for electric powertrain controls too. So I would actually go over what I have in mind for the course. Okay. And in case you have any questions, and uh, maybe Kaushik from Skilllink will be moderating it, so that in case you have any questions, feel free to stop. Not too much of interruptions, but still. Okay. And uh, maybe halfway through the webinar, we will actually have maybe a question answer session or something like that, an interactive session. Just in case you feel that there could be more points wherein we can add value to during this one hour, we can do it. Okay. End of the webinar, the what end of the next one hour, what I'm what I expect out of this is you guys have a at least an overall view of why do you need what is the importance of electric powertrain controls and why do you want to learn that and what are all the things that you need to learn for that. Okay. So with that. We'll go ahead with our presentation. Okay. So initially what we will do is we'll split this into three things. Okay. Electric powertrain and controls. First thing is we will look at what powertrain actually means, which most of you guys would be aware about. Okay. And uh, I assume most of you guys come from a mechanical engineering background. So you guys will be really familiar with powertrain. And next thing that we will look at is what are the trends in powertrain? And then look, to look at why electrified propulsion, okay? And uh, how electrified propulsion is coming in as a big disruptor in our automotive industry, especially in India, okay? And next thing, the biggest piece of puzzle here or the most puzzling piece is actually that of controls. And what value does controls add into it, okay? And the next thing is, what are the upcoming course details? And we will try to look at the breadth of things. So what is powertrain? Okay, rather than powertrain, maybe it should be called as torque train because it refers to the train of okay. torque, the train through which the torque flows or the power flows right from the engine till the wheels. So that is what the name powertrain actually means. So power and power and torque in physics terms are really different, but for a layman perspective or for uh, our purposes, we can actually take it as the same. Okay. So what are all the things that you would come in? So this, this picture would actually just give you an um, overview of the whole torque train. Okay. So it starts from the engine. Okay. And then goes on to my transmission or my bell housing. Bell housing is nothing but my uh, transmission cover is what is known as bell housing. Okay. This kind of an outdated chart, but this kind, this gives you the whole train through which the torque flows. Okay. And then you have what is known as the drive line. Okay. In between, between the engine and the transmission, we do have the clutch system in case of a manual transmission or a torque converter in case of an automatic transmission. Okay. And then the next thing that comes in is the transmission, the gearbox or the transmission, and then the drive line or the axle system, and then the differential, and then the half shaft or the axle shaft, which in turn goes to my wheels. So how does the torque travel through the whole whole train? Okay. That is the whole concept of power train. Out of which the engine power, engine controls takes the predominance. So that is actually 70 to 75 percentage of whole power train controls. When you look at power train controls as a whole. And with electrified power train controls, we will see what are all the uh, I would say the improvements that we will need to look at. So we will try to keep this one hour very generic. Okay, I'll touch upon some of the technical points towards when we come to the course discussion. So to start with, we will have it really generic as if anyone is able to follow up. Okay, follow very easily. So next thing is, so wherever, whenever the torque flows through each of them, through each of the mechanical parts, you're going to have the equivalent losses. So what you actually have with the engine would not be the same torque would not be there at your wheels. Okay. So how do you, so what are the losses which come in and how are you going to calculate and how do you actually manage with your gear ratio? So these are classic problems which have been 
dealt with right from beginning okay so these are all kind of mature so the next things that with additive components what are all the changes that power train is undergoing okay and how controls is changing so these are things which actually pose the most very interesting engineering problems okay so for now we'll just stick with the general power train architecture so now what we are seeing is different degrees of electrification that we are going to see we will see over the next hour Okay, so this is kind of a teaser. Maybe you guys would have already seen it. Before. Okay, so they are all pioneers so in the. What do you think? This is some, there is something the other. in common between the, the pictures that you see. A picture in the left Anyways, bottom yes. corner that you see is that of a Scottish inventor that goes back. The picture itself will say that that is something which we, a picture that looks more like what we see in our history books. So that is Robert Anderson, who was the first EV inventor. He was a Scottish inventor. and if you could actually guess it it was he actually founded the first ev way back in 1890s okay so that can actually tell you how old the ev technology actually has been or rather the idea of ev has been okay so he was the first guy who actually invented that and the next the indian face that you see is chetan maini okay so he is the father of the ev industry in india uh if you would all remember we all know the reva electric okay which mahindra and mahindra later acquired okay so chetan maini was the brain or he is the guy who actually uh, built the electric reva from scratch okay it was his own startup on those days wherein he came up it was an idea which was way ahead of time okay. in fact now he is more into uh, building up infrastructure for charging stations and things like that and the person that you see in the left the topmost picture is alex sibransky okay so he is the godfather of electric vehicles at present okay why because there is something known as power split electric vehicles architecture which what you see in your ford escape hybrid or your toyota prius hybrid which is the most famous electric vehicle that you can think of okay hybrid electric vehicle that you can think of so they all actually owe a royalty to alex severinsky because it comes from the power split architecture which he actually invented so i just gave i just put in this picture for you guys to have a idea of what things are okay so more of a interactive connect that we can start with so you're all right it's the common thing that is running between them as they are all disruptors in the ev industry at different points of time 1890s robert anderson and then chetan maini in indian context and now it is alex severinsky the inventor who is actually revolutionizing the whole automotive industry okay so this is the common thing that we saw okay so the next thing is as i said it was the electric vehicles started way back in the 1890s itself so this is an article from the new york times in 1800s so wherein they say that hey electric vehicles and that too they say that it is something which can be easily driven by ladies too okay so way back it was not something but cars were not something which ladies were able to drive that easily okay at least in the 19 early 1900s okay so it says electric vehicles attract attention okay so if this has happened in 1890s why all of a sudden post 2015 is where we see so much of electrification being discussed about so that is a thing which we all should be thinking about and the answer what do you think is the reason why electric vehicles is now gaining so much of attention though it has not over a period of time it was there on and off okay but now again it is gaining so much of popularity what do you think is the technology invention or the uh, technological advances which which is making the electric vehicle see the light of the day yeah climate change yes that is all true ultimately it's the climate change which is coming in okay but what is the technological advancement which is making us see that electric vehicles could be a viable option so the practicality should be coming from the uh, technology right yeah i do see some answers bms hydrogen cell 
lithium ion battery so battery technology yeah bingo most of you guys have the answers now okay so battery efficiency is the main reason why we see that electric electric vehicles are seeing the light of the day as someone mentioned here this year even the nobel prize for chemistry i guess it's chemistry right i'm not wrong came in for the inventor who actually invented the lithium ion battery and made extensive research on it so the reason why we see that is the battery technology and the motor technology which has grown by leaps and bounds and made it so efficient that we are able to think of electric vehicles as a viable option okay so next thing is and the next thing obviously is coming from the government why go by the government because the climate change protocol which is all coming in and the uh, more awareness coming in from from the environment front and we do see that the man made pollution is something which we are all bearing the grudge of the nature in different forms so there is a little bit of awareness which is coming in and the other economic reason is the fact that we don't have the the resources are all depleting Okay, so all these things put together, there was one person who put the right the the answer very beautifully, saying that it is a combination of economics, sustainability, and practicality. Okay, and obviously it should make the best business sense overall. Okay, so this is the reason why we see the electrification taking a lot of impetus these days. Okay, and in India especially, the government has come up with. the fame regulations which is the faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric schemes so this is something which is coming in as government's big ev push and there is a concessional gst for it so to promote evs evs are being charged at 12% gst against 29 to 53 for internal combustion engine passenger vehicles okay so these are things coming in from different sides one is the practicality from technological advancement and the next thing is the economics and obviously the sustainability next the practicality there are more questions to be answered because the charging we we still do not have answers for the charging infrastructure so that is something which needs to be uh, which which would need a lot of uh, research going on which which would need a lot of research to be happening in that place and the government and the we the public would be pitching forth and make sure that we have a network for putting in these things okay so the other part is what is the end of life regulation that we have for battery technology so how are we going to dispose the batteries so this is again a million dollar question which we would need to answer so these are different pieces of the coin pieces of the puzzle which are all coming in together still evs are will take a long way before they become the single most passenger vehicle segment assets okay but at least they are going to start coexisting with the ic engine technology vehicles okay and next thing obviously it was coming to emissions and evs so we do see that this is part of the global uh, warming and the climate change and we do see that with stringent laws coming in for the grams of carbon dioxide which is being emitted every mile You see that EVs are close to less than twenty percent, less than sixty uh, percent reduction. More than sorry, more than sixty percent reduction in carbon dioxide emission which comes in. Okay, and the EU target for twenty twenty five is something like one one six. So unless you really get, I would say, really uh, not even mild hybrid but plug in hybrid. you will not be able to reach the targets so all the oems tier 1 tier 2s when i say oem it refers to the original equipment man, uh, manufacturer say for example mahindra and mahindra or tata motors in india ford toyota general motors volkswagen bmw daimler they are all oems so when i say tier 1 suppliers tier 1 suppliers refer to the uh, first level of suppliers who directly give their products to the oems the foremost being bosch continental and you would see a lot of them like valio luke gkn so there are a lot of tier 1 suppliers and also tier 2 suppliers basically supply to the tier 1s so these are terms which which you guys would need to be familiar with and i'm sure 
most of you guys from the industry will be familiar with. Okay. So the emissions are the driving factors and the regulations which are coming up are the driving factors. More awareness coming in from the environment side and obviously there is a practicality aspect coming in from battery technology. Okay. So these all have added together to uh, make electric vehicles or hybrid electric vehicles a possibly viable option. Okay. So next is we all, these are all stories which you guys already know about. Okay. So we will go into next things like what are all the next technology trends that we are looking at. Okay. And this is a little off the topic, but this will actually tell you the four disruptive technology driven trends, which is electrification, connectivity and IoT, autonomous driving and diverse mobility. And electrification is the first step for the whole thing. So the, these are all things which are related and the precursor to most of the uh, te disruptive technology that we are going to see in automotive industry is most probably going to be electrification. And as you would see, these are all, this actually gives you a share of uh, a sampling, I would say, of how each of the share in terms of cost structure happens. Ultimately, it's economic. So most of the invest investments are going into sharing solutions, autonomous solutions, and user interface technologies. And you can actually think of these things coming along with electrification too, because not just electrification and energy storage, which is eight here, which has 8.2 billion coming in, the user interface technologies, autonomous solutions and sharing technologies, two, three and 10, again, would have their fleet predominantly electrified. So that is how the industry is looked upon, okay? Or at least that is how it is being looked at. So next thing is, okay, we are all talking about the EV uh, development and all those things. So how are we gonna be part of that journey of EV development, okay? So when it comes to electrified vehicles, so we at least uh, people who have been in the OEM all along have uh, had the traditional mindset of being just with the regular engines, IC engines. And uh, next thing is, it's no longer going to be independent departments, but rather multidisciplinary approach between different areas of expertise of engineering. Okay. So it's not going to be the prima facie, only the automotive engineers who will drive the innovation in vehicles anymore. So it's predominantly going to be people who have a good base in automotive technology and will be ready to upskill themselves in the electric, electric, uh, electrical and electronics domain. Okay. So what we need is actually a multidisciplinary approach between all of them. Okay. And this is where we are coming to. Okay. And uh, the, the chart that you see here, says that most of the uh, research, where do you need the skilled and the semi-skilled people for the EV development? So this is a chart which has been taken from the US Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics. I put this slide just for you guys to, just to drive home the point, how this EV development is, is gonna need a lot of uh, engineers working on it, okay? So the scientific research on batteries, so that is where most of the skilled labor would come in, skilled people would actually come in, okay? So design and development of automotive, automobile technology, you need to have a combination of skilled and semi-skilled people here. So who are they? The engineers. When I say engineer, it's not gonna be just mechanical engineer or electronics engineer. It's gonna be multidisciplinary engineers, mechanical engineers who can code and who can do modeling algorithms, okay? And uh, electrical engineers who can understand powertrain technology. So it's kind of the uh, mix and match approach, which every engineer would need to have. Okay. And uh, engineering technicians, software developers and industrial designers. So this is where we all would fit up. Okay. So, and then apart from that, you do have manufacturing, vehicle maintenance, infrastructure development. Infrastructure development is again, a very big thing. If you want EVs to practically be set up in India and you see, you see that they need to have growth. You need to have the equivalent infrastructure coming in. Okay. So we would restrict ourselves to only the technical part of it. And I'm sure we do have all those, uh, the current affairs will take care of all the infrastructure development news that we need to know about. Okay. 